Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Mr. Hino with Missy Knows Math. Today's video I have, if you guys have ever played the dot game before, I actually have modified it to be a math game. So if you want to see it, stay with me. Okay guys, so if you're stuck at home, if you're bored and want a cool game to play, again, it's off the regular dot game. If you've never played this before, it's where you take turns connecting dots and whoever makes the square gets the points. Actually, in this case here, if you make the square, you get the numbers. So check this out. So if you guys want the template for this paper, I'll give you a link in the description, okay? So once you guys have, in fact, if you didn't want to, you could just get a you know a plain piece of paper and make these dots. It just goes one, two, three, four, five, six dots down and six dots across. But it's up to you. So what I would do now is to first start going ahead and putting some numbers where the boxes would be. And no, I don't have any kind of system here. I just randomly put numbers. You know, if you um, want to make it interesting, you know, you, you put some numbers high, you put some numbers low. It really doesn't matter where you put the numbers. I would just, to make it fair, I wouldn't put the numbers too big. Because if you do that, then it kind of makes the game unfair for the person who would not get that box. So I'll show you, I'll show you how that works in a second. There's a lot of threes, there's a lot of fours, there's a nine right down there. Let's put a smaller number next to it. Um, I'll put a five here, a six there, another three here, a two there, and a four there. Okay, so the first step would be to put the numbers you want in where you would see a box. And again, try not to make the numbers too large um, because then you just, um, you'll see when I start to play this game how it makes it a little unfair then. So if you've ever played the dot game, here's how it works. One person decides to go first and what you should do is you should use uh, different colors just so you know who took their turn. So I have a pink pen and I have a black pen. Okay, so whoever goes first would go ahead and connect any two dots. And it must be either vertical or it must be horizontal. So if the next person takes their turn, you can see how I change the different color here. So you can see how they're just taking turns connecting dots. And this game can get, I mean, it's going to take a while to get going. So the next person takes their turn. So you can see how there really isn't much strategy when you're starting the game off. It's going to just go back and forth until it starts to get interesting. So watch this. In fact, when I play with my students, it kind of just... This can go on for, gosh, this could go on for five or ten minutes. Uh, as long as somebody is not making a mistake, and I'll show you how a person might make a mistake. So you can just see how we take turns. It would actually be more fun if I was actually playing somebody right now, but for the sake of just showing you how this game goes. I'm just pretending to... Um, be playing against myself. Okay, so you can see how when the, the lines and the dots start getting connected, you'll start to see the strategy come into play. So notice I am... Starting to run out of spaces here. Um, okay. Okay, do you see how things are going here? It's gonna it's gonna look like this until somebody now starts to connect dots to make a box. So I'm gonna go ahead and pretend like I'm I've made a mistake. So let's say somebody takes their turn and does this. So now if I'm the other person, 
I will connect these dots to make a box. So let's say that was Mr. Hino. I just got myself five points. Now, regardless if I make a box, the now the turn should alternate to the other person. So now you can see how the other person can go fine. I'll, I'll get three. And we'll just call this the mystery person. But then you can see how Mr. Hino will now get six. So you can see how the numbers are going to add up. And obviously the objective of the game is to get the most points. So you can see how strategy is going to be involved here. Because you, um, when you're ready to make a box, you're also looking to see if the your opponent will be able to get more points out of the box that they make. So it's definitely math related because you're trying to gather up numbers and at the end you'll add up your score. But it's also a strategy game, being able to go, okay, if I get this box of two, I might give you know my opponent the nine. So you have to kind of strategize and say, okay, uh, you know, if I take the seven, then I give my opponent the lower score of three. So it's an interesting game if, you know, you're just trying to play somebody and you're trying to, it's almost like chess, where you might give up a smaller number to get a bigger number. Same thing in chess, where you might give up a pawn in order to get a bishop or even a queen, you know, something big. So again, check out the description for a link to this paper. If not, just make six box down, six box across. Fill in the numbers. I'll let you see my numbers. It doesn't really matter what you put in there. Uh, remember, somebody goes first, somebody goes second. And remember, even if you make a box, it's the next person's turn. So the turns will alternate no matter who makes a box. And at the end, just add up the points and see who won the Dots and Boxes math game. Okay, guys, hopefully you like this game. Um, give me a thumbs up if you think it's a cool game. And I'd love to hear in the comments section if you played this with somebody and how it went. Okay, I'm Mr. Hino with Mr. Hino Math. I'll see you in the next video.